At the unveiling of the giant portrait of Queen Victoria, she confidently pulls the rope down. But no matter how hard she tugs on the rope, the curtain won't come down. Just as Queen Victoria becomes isolated and helpless, her knight in shining armor comes to her side once again. May I be of assistance, ma'am? I should be most grateful. It will be my pleasure to serve you, ma'am. Lord Melbourne means more than just a little favor. He'll reshuffle the cabinet to help her consolidate her power. During his four years as Prime Minister, he has passed on his life's experience to her and coached the young queen in the ways of politics. However, Lord Melbourne was not highly regarded. His legacy as Prime Minister was not favorable, as he had no great foreign wars or domestic issues to handle. But there is only one note that will bring tears to everyone's eyes, and that is his full support and dedication to the newly crowned Queen Victoria. He devoted himself like a father to the young queen. After a long time of working side by side and being close to each other, Queen Victoria's feelings towards him became different. Lord Am was a mentor and a friend, a father and a lover to Queen Victoria. Perhaps she didn't realize how this growing relationship would end. But Lord Melbourne knew his time was limited and he had to find a man for Victoria to rely on as soon as possible. They say matrimony is a necessary station for a queen to grow up. By getting married, Victoria would be able to rely on her husband and not on the old man, Lord Melbourne. So one day, the Prime Minister led Queen Victoria to the portrait of Queen Elizabeth I. After she complained that she was plagued by her uncles, Lord M revealed the true purpose of coming here. His mission today is to urge Queen Victoria to marry someone. Victoria stared up at the portrait of Queen Elizabeth I for a long time, and then said this. Do you think she was lonely? I believe she found companions. Immediately after Queen Victoria voiced her concern that she had never seen many happy marriages, so marriage wasn't on her list right now either. In fact, Lord Melbourne's marriage was as tragic as she made it out to be. His beloved wife betrayed him by running off with Byron and left him, and the child she left him did not survive. Lord M's love and marriage were also full of holes and wounds. After learning of Queen Victoria's concerns, Lord Melbourne was at a loss for words. But Lord M's temporary compromise did not ease her worries, for Victoria's uncle Leopold arrived at Buckingham Palace from Belgium, having come to lecture her that marriage was her duty. As soon as he entered the palace, he whispered to his sister and then recommended his nephew to his niece in a very ungracious manner. Albert has finished his studies. He's the most admirable young man could not hope for a better husband than my nephew but that was not the way victoria remembered her cousin from her youth the albert she remembered didn't smile didn't dance and she even commented that he was sleepy as a machine by 9 30 every day the next morning victoria met lord melbourne and told him off like a child she rented and raved about her mother and her uncle's bad idea for her to get married lord melbourne didn't approve of her marrying her cousin either after all, the offspring of a consanguineous marriage would have strange hereditary problems. The two of them then began their daily project of going horseback riding in the morning. Lord Melbourne usually used this time to get inside Queen Victoria's head and learn about her world. He was a masterful tutor, guiding Victoria and asking her to name men she had recently had a good time with. Queen Victoria has a favorable opinion of the Russian prince, but she has a disdain for Prince George of England. Lord Melbourne laughed at her words, and then he offered his own insights. A marriage of pure English lineage would be welcomed and supported by the people at home. However, their conversation somehow found its way to the Queen's uncle Leopold. So it takes the opportunity to approach Lord Melbourne and ask him to use his influence with the Queen to persuade Victoria to get married as soon as possible. Otherwise, Victoria's reign as Queen will be in constant trouble. But how could Lord Melbourne allow anyone to speak ill of the young girl? It is more important, I think, that she chooses wisely. The Prime Minister's implication is clear. He wants Queen Victoria's marriage to be a union of love and not because she's not good enough to be queen, so she needs a man to help her. Sitting alone by the window late at night, playing with her gift, Victoria made a bold decision. She would follow her heart and confess her love to the man she loved. Queen Victoria strolled along the path filled with fallen leaves, slowly lifting the black veil covering her face with a breeze. After revealing her bright and delicate face, she walked up to the Prime Minister and boldly declared her love for him. I'm speaking as a woman, not as a queen. At the beginning, I thought that you were the father, that you were the only companion I could ever desire. Lord Melbourne did not say anything after hearing Queen Victoria's confession. He grabbed her white gloved hand in silence. After thinking for a long time, he said his first words in response to her. Do you know that the rooks mate for life? Every year they build their nests together. Then he told the little girl the love story of the rooks. In fact, he's using the love of rooks to tell the story of his marriage to his wife. Although his marriage wasn't perfect or happy, he wanted to be as faithful to his love as the rooks. 
I believe when you give your heart, it will be without hesitation. But you cannot give it to me. No, you must keep it intact for someone else. I have no use for it, you see. Staring at the back of the girl who turned away for lonely, Lord Melbourne's heart was as sad as she was. At the ball that night, Lord Melbourne took the initiative and came to Queen Victoria. As he danced with the Queen on his arm, he talked about Queen Elizabeth I. Elizabeth I also had a male companion named Robert Dudley. Robert's wife passed away, but Robert, who was single, did not marry Elizabeth I. This was not because of a lack of affection between the two, but because they both knew that they should not be united because of the difference in their status. Lord Melbourne's words got Victoria thinking, so Victoria traced Elizabeth, the first portrait every day, and decided to follow her example and learn from her to rule her country alone. Lord Melbourne did not give up trying to persuade Queen Victoria. He still hoped the girl would marry and find a husband who would love and respect her. Queen Victoria, who has put love aside to focus on her career, is extremely proud now. She would even jokingly challenge Lord Melbourne by saying, I will not get married in order to please you. You must please yourself. In fact, that's the only thing Lord Melbourne expects. You have to be happy in your marriage, to be able to live up to what he's done for you. There's no doubt that he loves Victoria. However, it's a complicated love that he can express to her. So he will silently guard this girl until she meets the right man. Then he will stay in the past of Victoria's life with peace of mind. Then he would stand still and watch Queen Victoria walk step by step towards her bright and beautiful future. For Victoria, such a future with a companion was about to come. It was on this night that Queen Victoria, playing the piano, met the love of her life. 